Hey, what's going on everyone? Hope all of you guys are doing well. So today I am going to be reviewing a film I haven't seen since it was released on DVD uh, or VHS. I think this came out like more towards close to the end of VHS tapes and slowly progressing to the DVD format. And it's crazy that I, you know, over what 20 years since I had seen it, I decided to rewatch it. And that's the film, The League of an Extraordinary Gentleman. And I do believe this was actually Sean Connery's last movie. I believe he went and went on to go retire. Um, and this movie, I feel like, is a hidden gem. I feel like it's ahead of its time. There was a lot of things I feel that could have made this film a little bit better, but I also feel like, you know, given the time frame that it was released, it just, I don't know, I just feel like it had to compete with other films at that time, so it didn't do as well as it should have. But it's got a great cast. You have the likes of Sean Connery, um, Shane, Shane West, is it? Mm, yeah. Shane West, uh, there's a few other recognizable faces. Um, actually, the actor who is the invisible man in this, uh, he was in The Flash. I didn't realize that until I looked up the IMDb. But basically, Sean Connery uh, is basically in some way or another is recruited for this, um, you know, this mission to, to take out this person known as the phantom has been wreaking havoc and you know along with him are some of these other individuals who are recruited like dorian gray the invisible man dracula's bride and i believe shane west plays tom sawyer uh who we find out is like a secret agent and they come together and you also have dr jekyll and mr hyde as well and well a lot of things start to happen. There are some twists in this film. Now, I will state, I did not like the twist. Uh, I, I mean, I liked it to some extent, but the problem with it is that it was too soon into the film because this movie is, I believe, just a little over two hours. Um, so I felt like they should have waited more close towards the end for the twist and not the middle of the movie, basically. Um so that's like one of my minor complaints. Uh, two, I feel like the story could have been done a little bit better, but it is what it is. Um, I mean, it's 2003. What can you expect? Um, I do like the characters. I thought the characters were great. The CGI on this is not good. Uh, there are some moments that are questionable. Uh, you know, I think they could have done a little bit better with that. But considering there's always the you know, original print of this film before all the editing and special effects. So I feel like they could go back and redo them. Um, but nonetheless, for a film that came out in 2003, you know, just over 20 years, um, you know, it's still not bad. It holds up. I do feel like it needs a 4K release because this movie, I think, would benefit. It would just look absolutely stunning. Like the um, Oh, what is the term I'm looking for? The, the visuals, like the, the um, you know, the um, architect from these buildings just look absolutely amazing. Everything kind of stands out because this does take place, I want to say like mid to late 1800s. Um, so everything that was going on that during that time just really stands out. And I think visually this movie would look amazing on 4K. And it's just ahead of its time if it gets unique in its own way. And I would recommend for anyone who hasn't seen it to give it a watch. Um, now, it is a 20th Century Fox release. So I do feel like, you know, it'll never get a 4K release unless another boutique label. Um, well, not another boutique label. But if a boutique label was to release it like Arrow, maybe Shout Factory, maybe the Criterion Collection. But it's definitely long overdue. And for some odd reason, don't quote me on this. I, I I don't know if it's just my TV or it's the 
Blu-ray itself, and I do believe it's the Blu-ray itself, I feel like there's an audio issue with a lot of these movies, especially when it comes to the Fox releases, because I have a couple where I have had issues with the sound. I'm not sure why that is. Um, it seemed to be like very low, but like certain scenes, action scene, scenes, the, the sound would be, you know, loud. You can hear it, but other times like certain dialogue and stuff like that, it's like, okay, I got to keep turning the volume up just to hear what they're saying. So I don't know what's going on there. Um, yeah, I wish I could say more about this movie that hasn't been said, but I think by now a lot of you guys have seen it. <laughs> Excuse me. But I do believe during the time it's released in theaters, I think it was competing against a couple other movies. So I think that's why it didn't do too well. But I do believe it grew a cult following over the years. It does have its issues. It, can't speak. It does have its issues, but I feel like it's still a fun, enjoyable action drama type of film. I do like the direction that they went with uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I think that was pretty cool. Um, and I can kind of tell that they took some of that influence to use for the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde for Van Helsing. I feel like those two movies could have taken place in the same universe to some extent, um, which, to be honest, they probably should have. Um, but nonetheless, I wish I could say more. But that is my review and my thoughts on The League of an Extraordinary Gentleman. If you've seen this movie, let me know what your thoughts are on it. I did a video a while back just talking about what I thought of the film and, you know, why I felt like it was a hidden gem and, you know, it was like a forgotten film because you don't hear people talk about it very often. Um, but I figured I would do a review after revisiting the film. But uh, nonetheless, I hope you guys enjoyed. Definitely give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more content. With that being said, I'm Film Talk with Mikey. Until next time, we will talk films. Thanks for watching. Take care. And I will see you guys next time.